Hello, welcome back to the channel. Today we are covering another video on Power BI and Databricks better together. And this time we'll discuss access control. A lot of people are asking, should I use the access control features in Power BI or Unity Catalog in Databricks? Should I use a service account or service principal? How should I do the um, access control with AAD path through? We'll cover all of that in today's video. Without further ado, let's head over to my laptop. Right, so before we talk about the access control, let's talk about authentication. Authentication is letting Power BI and Databricks know who you are. So Power BI or Databricks can decide what data you have access to. And in Power BI, there's two places you're doing authentication. First is desktop. If you're a Power BI developer, you will authenticate using your personal account in desktop and the um, authentication methods include username password personal access token and OAuth. these we've covered in a different video in the same power bi on databricks series i'll put the link on the top right corner of this video and once you authenticate using your personal account SQL Warehouse will hit Unity Catalog and understand what access you as a Databricks user have access to and return you the data accordingly. Now you will build your semantic model, you build your visualization, and then you publish to Power BI service. What you need to do is to edit the data source credentials. And this is the credential that Power BI service will use in the future when it does the refresh of the import uh, semantic model, as well as direct query. Once you have published to Power BI service, there are different access patterns you can use. If you have a uh, import semantic model or anything that has an import element like a composite model, aggregations, or hybrid tables, what you really need to do is to set up a service account. So when you edit that data source credentials, you want to use a service account. Now, service account is different versus a service principal. Service account is set up as a user principal in your AAD directory. So as far as AAD is concerned, it's a user, but it doesn't belong to a person in your organization. For instance, you could set up Power BI underscore refresh at yourcompany.com. That service account is a account that's used to refresh Power BI only and does not belong to a specific person, whereas service principal is actually a principal that belong to a service, which means you need to set up um, app registration for it. And you can use service principal to authenticate uh, between Power BI and Databricks. But so as principal only support personal access tokens. So if, if you want to use something like OAuth or username and password, uh, so as principal uh, cannot be used. And for this particular access control pattern, because as far as Databricks is concerned, what is trying to talk to Databricks is just a service account and Unity Catalog will check what the service account have access to, returns all the data accordingly. And that means if you want granular level access control, you will need to set it up using role level security in Power BI. The second pattern is very similar. You set up a still service account to talk to Databricks and Databricks will return whatever the service account has access to, to Power BI service. The only difference is in the second access pattern, your Power BI semantic model doesn't have a import element. Everything is still a query and you're not using the access control features for the end users within Databricks because Databricks is only gatekeeping what that service account have access to. Instead, like the first scenario, you are doing the granular level access control using the role level security features in Power BI. The next pattern though is different. 
what's happening here is you will set up a direct query semantic model in Power BI. Uh, there will be a checkbox when you do edit data source credentials. And uh, if you pick all off, there's a box that says allow users to use their own Power BI identity to connect to the data source in direct query mode. And that's the box you need to tick for AAD pass through. And this means when it's a direct query and the end user is querying or is interacting with the Power BI visualization, Power BI will send the identity of that end user back to SQL Warehouse in Databricks and the Databricks SQL Warehouse will check in Unity Catalog what this end user um, have access to in terms of tables and rows and um, columns and then we'll return the query results accordingly. So in this way, you don't necessarily have to have two separate security models in Unity Catalog and in Power BI service. You can consolidate all of your access control in Unity Catalog itself, but it's very unlikely that all of your data set will be in a direct query uh, mode. That means in reality, in an enterprise, you probably will have a combination of these access control patterns, depending on what storage mode you're using, as well as your requirements. Last bit I wanted to cover is to say, if you're using direct query with AAD pass-through, what does Unity Catalog actually gatekeep? So you can do table access control. So if the end user doesn't have access to that table, they won't be able to see the query results. You can do role filter, which is the traditional role level security. This type of users have this uh, access to these roles. And you can do column masks. The masks does carry through to Power BI as well. If you're on direct query with AAD path through and also dynamic views is supported. That's it. I hope uh, this video is helpful. Please like and subscribe and we'll see you at the next video.